Well, good afternoon. Let's explore a little bit about fractions. Yay, fractions! Yes, I appreciate the fact that fractions offer challenges to learners that we work with, specifically those struggling learners and those with disabilities. You know, the whole idea, of course, with the idea that we, well, we'll get to it, but this idea of what we initially say is a number, and then, of course, how we represent fractions and the challenges that exist there. Well, anyways, to get us started, my focus today on the fractions element will be to contextualize fractions, deal with the meaning of fractions, and in respect to that, overall, focus in on the elements that offer challenges that, yes, begin at the primary elementary, but continue with us to the middle secondary. And my hope is by introducing some of these elements and us thinking about some of these elements, when we look at some of the online materials that we're working with, when we look at some of the drill and practice opportunities were provided that might not offer models, that might not offer the timeline, that might not offer some of the uh, visual representation, we might think and, and reconsider about what we need to offer in terms of in addition to. And then, of course, when we look at potentially some of the videos that we want to select that offer some of those elements, even though they may be fairly crude, um, and when I think about that, I think of, uh, well, at times, Khan Academy, they're very basic, and yet those elements might be the visual that the individual needs to break apart uh, this construct and, and make the fraction more meaningful. Let me get started. Well, and before we go any further, let me just also clarify the fact that, you know, and, and something I think we all know, but, you know, there's a period of time when we're doing instruction when through our textbooks and through our instruction, we're ingraining a certain concept, a certain understanding, a certain idea, and then we get into fractions and we turn it on its head just a bit. In respect to that, there's kind of five ways of thinking of the meaning of fractions. One of them is this part-whole aspect. And with that, you know, as we see right here, so we have, what, 30 students. Now, we're visually representing those 30 students into three equal parts. We've organized that in terms of a length, in terms of a line. We've organized that in terms of color. We've organized that in terms of gender, by the way, as well, so they visually represent for the individual, while they may not see boys and girls, they see, oh, wait, there's differences here. And then, of course, we represent it in a whole number. And then, of course, we represent it as a fraction. And then, finally, we represent it as this idea of a part whole. Now, that's a critical component as we go forward, not only the initial conceptualization, but as we go forward in trying to understand this idea of a fraction and what we're asking that fraction to do, both in multiplication, division, subtraction, and further types of computation. Another element when we think of fractions is this idea of measurement. Now, back to what we were just a moment ago uh, looking at is, is, is a line of sorts, and here we have uh, a much more specific number line, and we're dealing with the whole number that we represent, and of course we know that. And then from that, we're seeing visually represented the fact that fractions fit within that, so therefore they're not a number, they're a number in and of itself, and that's something we'll get to in just a moment. But we're also, by identifying the length, they're seeing the fact that there's a piece of the element. They're a part of this um, element of, of numbers, of measurement, and therefore, you know, an individual part. Equally important is, is seeing it as a unit of the fraction. So, for example, one-eighth. Well, as we look at one-eighth in this selected length, then we can count or measure to show that it takes five of those to reach five-eighths. This focuses on the many parts which, again, part whole solution is very relevant and, again, really critical for the individual to understand and make that connection. Now, we may not use something as basic, but it's the same idea as we go forward in terms of how we're trying to conceptualize things and have them trying to understand things. And we'll get to that, everything from estimation uh, and other aspects. The third thing when we look at the fraction construct is division. Of course, Sean, is division. Yes, but division in a different way. So first of all, of course, you know, we have $10. We want to share it across four people. Well, there's a fourth, of course, uh, the individuals are receiving $2.50, great. But this idea that division is a, another kind of construct of the fraction, and folks need to understand that. And that's critical because, of course, division in itself can be complex for many of our learners. And so this kind of a, it's not a part whole scenario, uh, but instead there's this representation of what it means. And again, representing that, understanding that, and making a connection in respect to the fact that fraction constructs, a third element is division. A fourth element is this idea of operator. 
and fractions can be used, for example, to indicate an operation, right? As in four-fifths of 20 square feet or two-thirds of an audience was holding banners. You know, there's an operation there. Here, the situations indicate a fraction of a whole number, and students may be able to use their mental math to determine the answer. Well, you know, when they visualize this aspect of an audience or the number of individuals holding a banner or, um, you know, well, square feet is a little bit more of a challenge, but anyways. It does offer a challenge. It isn't taught directly. Oftentimes we're making an assumption, and this is something we need to appreciate in respect to that operator and that operation. And again, another construct of the fraction. A fifth element that I wanted to focus in on is this whole uh, this ratio aspect of the whole part. Now here, so for example, a fourth can mean the probability of event is four, right? Okay, fourth, probability of event, fourth, makes sense, right? But let's go a little bit deeper. So for example, ratio of a fourth could be that the ratio of those wearing jackets, part, and those not wearing jackets, another part, right? Okay, part, part. But then we switch around in terms of the whole aspect and those wearing jackets, part, as compared to the entire class, whole. So when working with ratios, students have to attend to the part, part, or part, whole relationship. And so they have to pay attention to that context, they have to appreciate the context, and what that context means in representation of the fraction, but then what we do with the fraction. So that's a concept that we want to really reinforce and continue to reinforce all these concepts and these constructs. We want to reinforce and continue to reinforce um, throughout the use of fractions. Um, it allows for you know, a variety of different elements, and, and we'll get into those here in just a moment. Now let's take a step back for just a moment and think about the fact that what we're asking them to do and why fractions can be so difficult is that we're asking always to build upon prior knowledge. Well, whole numbers are prior knowledge, right? Okay. But when they apply aspects of the whole number to what we're now trying to instruct, ooh, that's where we become problematic. And where I'm going with this is the fact that some of the rules with the whole numbers, some of the concepts of the whole numbers, well, that's not, it's almost opposite elements of what we're trying to do with fractions. And we need to appreciate that. And we need to appreciate that when it comes to the direct instructions, explicit instruction we want to find within the online venues that allow individuals to make that connection. Now think of it, for example, with the numerator and denominator. Yeah, really basic, Sean. Yeah, but this continues to be a function and a challenge for individuals when it comes to how we're supposed to then conceptualize the steps we need to take for division and multiplication and other elements. So first of all, they tend to think of these as, super, uh, as separate values. You know, three is a separate value than four versus the fact that, wait, no, three-fourths, that's, that's, that's the value. Um, they see, you know, they, they, they don't necessarily see three-fourths, you know, as a number. Um, so number lines, um, visualization, the area models that we have here are elements to be able to, to conceptualize on a number line, for example, where the number actually exists and to represent the fact that it is a separate number. I mean, it's as simple as saying that we don't say three over four, instead we say three fourths. Because we say three over four, though, that's really representing what well, we have the number three and we have the number four, numbers that you know about, numbers you've been doing simple math with, numbers you've been doing more advanced math with, but now, wait, it's, you know, what? No, three fourths, it's a separate number. Simple, but really, really important. Now, final aspect of that, when you think about it, and again, really simple idea, but again, the context and the construct and making the connections is something as simple as, well, I look at one-fifth and I think, well, one-fifth is smaller than one-tenth because five is smaller than ten. Well, I see that continuing over when we look at numbers um, and, excuse me, when we look at fractions, when we're dealing with individuals to do a more complex math with fractions, they still at times will see one-fifth as smaller than one-tenth because of five and ten. Well, this is as simple as where the number lines can be. And that is that I could see where one-fifth falls versus one-tenth and make an understanding that, oh, one-tenth is much smaller than one-fifth because I'm visualizing it or the parts I could look at or when I estimate an, uh, elements in terms of where it is on, uh, on a, not only a line but where it is in reference to the whole number. So we need to contextualize that. You know, it may be the fact that, hey, would you rather have a half, uh, you know, your favorite activity, would you rather have a half hour on that, a quarter on that? Or a tenth of an hour on that. Oh, okay, wait, wait, yeah, half hour. Oh, half hour's a little, yeah, I'd rather have a half hour. But it's that un understanding, that, that, that reinforcing that, making the connection. Fine. Now, there's some elements I want to get into next, 
but I want to take a break here because I want to get to, into activity because the activities I've offered here today try to illustrate the fact that how there are a number of tools out there that allow us to back to the visualization, but also back to the context, back to you know the, the construct, but, but the contextualizing and visualizing and connecting to, there's another different activities web-based that allow us to reinforce that aspect. And there are some apps, of course, as well. Actually, a number of apps allow that as well, that um, uh, by when using it, there's a number of things you can do in terms of co um, complex math, but also basic math with fractions that allows that learner that support, uh, that reinforcement, and that independence. So let's take a moment here to kind of explore some of those activities, and then we'll get back together again, and with that, we'll explore elements of how very globally we can look at things instructionally, and by doing that, look at different ways of introducing things, look at the types of supports we want to make sure that our online modules have. So when we're selecting it with certain individuals with fraction challenges, we could then support in a more meaningful, explicit manner.